Okay, so what we're moving on to now is we're looking at um, what's called iterations, or iterations as they say in America. Um, and basically all these are, are loops. Okay, so whenever you hear a programmer talking about um, an iteration, uh, we're talking about looping. And there are two types in Python. We can loop for a set number of times. And if we do that, then we use what's called a for loop. And we could also loop um, indefinitely. Okay, so we could um, loop for um, an indefinite amount of times. So for, I don't know, it could be three times, it could be a hundred times. We don't know. Um, but we could make it indefinite um, until a certain condition occurs. And we're going to be looking at that a little bit later on. So looking at for loops, this is where you loop something for a set number of times. Okay, just again, that if you ever hear the word iteration, we mean looping. Okay, so don't get scared by that word. Okay, so whenever we um, loop for a set number of times, um, we often use what's called the range function. So just before I do any demonstration, uh, it might be worth just having a little look at what the range function actually does. Okay, so the range statement is used to indicate how many times a loop will be repeated. And the structure of the range function is as follows. We have a starting number, we have our up to number, and we have the steps in which we want to actually loop. And I'll show you exactly what that means in a little while. So the start and the step are both optional. We don't need to use those. The up to must always be there. And it means up to but not including the value. So if we had range 7, that is going to count from 0 up to 6. Okay, So it's going to count up to but not including 7, which so 6 would be the upper value. And all of the numbers that we put in our range function have to be whole numbers. Okay, We can't have any decimals. So here's an example of using the range function. So if we typed in range 10, then in a loop it would loop 10 times, but starting at 0. And 9 would be the top number that we would count up to. Okay, So we'd count up to 10, but not including it, so 9 would be the upper limit. So range 10 would produce the list 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 not 10, sorry, my mistake. And if you actually look at that list, um, if you counted how many values you saw starting at 0, there would actually be 10 there. Okay, So 0 would be number 1, 1 would be the second, 2 would be the third number, and so on up to the tenth number which is 9. So range 10 produces the list 0 up to 9. Range 1, comma 7, so that's starting at 1 and counting up to, but not including 7, will produce the list 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And we could also put some steps in there as well. So if we had the range 0, 30, 5, we would start at 0. We would um, count up to, but not including 30. And we would only show the, work, uh, the numbers um, in steps of 5. So it would produce 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. It wouldn't show 30 because obviously 30 is the up to number. So it's up to but not including. And range 5, minus 1, minus 1. Now what that is showing is that we are starting at 5. And we're going up to zero, minus, uh, minus 1 but not including it. So already we're telling the program that we're going to be actually counting down um, our number line. And we're going to be going in steps of minus 1. So that's producing 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 as our results. So just a couple of things uh, more. One main major, major thing before we look at our for loops. Okay, Programmers, please remember that programmers count from 0. A really weird idea. But if we were to count, I don't know, the first five numbers, a programmer would count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so there's five values there. Zero is the first value. Four is the fifth value. Okay, so if we use range five, just to look at what we had before, okay, that is our up to number. Range five is going to count the first five numbers, but not actually, uh, not actually using five um, in its 
um, in its list. Okay, so it'd be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. There's five values there that it would actually count. Five is the sixth value, the sixth number. Okay, so it wouldn't be um, chosen there. Okay, so that's a bit of um, sort of theory back background uh, before we start looking at for, for loops. Hopefully, um, that will all make a lot more sense when we actually look at our programming. Okay, so here we've got PyScripta. If I were to type in four x in, and then I was to type in zero, one, two, three, four, finish with a colon, and if I was then to print the values of x, this is what happens. So what we've done is we've set off a for loop. X is a little variable, and what X is going to do is it's going to take on different numbers as we loop through, as we cycle through. So the first loop, first time this loops around, X is going to take the number 0, and then we're going to print 0. Then we're going to loop around again, and X this time is going to take the value of 1, and it's going to print 1. Going to loop around, be 2, then 3, and then 4 and then it's going to finish because it's got to the upper limit of our number list. And you can see the results, 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 on the screen. So that's one way of doing it, but as we talked about on that slideshow, instead of having this list of numbers to count through, what we can do is we can use a function called range. Okay. So if I was to do um, run this program, what it's going to do is it's going to look at the list of numbers produced by this function. So like we saw before, because we've only got the one number here, that's the up to number. So range 5 is going to produce the list of numbers 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Just like what we saw before, but it's a much tidier way of doing it. So x on the first loop is going to be 0, and it will print 0 to the screen. Then it will be 1, and print it to the screen. Then 2, then 3, then 4. Let's have a look. And there it is, okay, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So there's our for loop working well. So we don't have to print x, okay, we could print something like hello world to the screen. And this is going to, again, print five times for x in range. x is going to take the value of 0 the first time round, then 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. And as soon as it gets to 5, this loop is going to stop and it's going to finish. So if I run this, okay, you can see that Hello World has been printed out five times, exactly what we wanted. There's the zeroth one, there's the foot number one, the first one, second one, third one, and fourth one, so five in total. And what I was doing there, I was just demonstrating how a programmer would count. They count, this is the number zero, this is number one, number two, number three, and number four. And when it gets to number five, it will stop, okay, because we count from zero. Okay, so that's all very well and good but it might be that we don't want to um, count from um, 0, we might want to count from number 2. So if we use 4x in range and we had our starting number of 2, and again we still wanted to count up to 5 but not including 5, so, up to, so, so basically 4 would be the upper number, let's see what happens now. So you can see here that it's printed a list 2, 3 and 4. So x took the value of 2 first of all, then 3, then 4, each time I was printing the values of x, and then we close the program down. And other things that we can do is we could actually um, loop around, so do a for loop. We could start at 0, we could go up to but not including 10, and it might be that we want to um, go up in steps of 2. So let's, let's see what happens this time. If I was to run this program, you can see that it starts at 0. x takes on the value of 0, the first loop. Then the second time round, because we're going up in steps of 2, x has taken the value of 2, and then 4, and then 6, and then 8. And because we're going up to 10 but not including it, as soon as it's past 8, it comes out of this loop and finishes. OK. So let's do a really nice um, annoying program if 
I did 4x in range 1000 and then I printed this will take a while let's add another zero in there and I ran this program okay so if I was to count all of these okay it would take a while there would be a thousand different statements there because I've set up a loop that is going to cycle round starting at zero up to a thousand but not including it sorry ten thousand I can't even look at my zeros and it's going to each time print this will take a while okay so that is the basics of a for loop what we will do um, next time is we'll look at how we could um, perhaps look at um, looping for an indefinite amount of time so when a condition occurs but this is if we know how many times we want to loop around in fact before we finish let's just think how could we display um, the times table okay so what we could do is we could print the following so for x in range 0 starting at 0 let's go up to 10 and what we could do is we could say that we have a variable let's have number 2 and we could print x multiplied by number equals and then we could have number star x let's see what happens when we run this program so we've got 0 multiplied by 2 equals 0 1 multiplied by 2 equals 2 2 multiplied by 2 equals 4 3 and 2 is 6 and so on and so forth and that goes up to when x is 9 now often when we do our times tables we might go up to 10 obviously when we're programming okay if 10 is the up, upper limit we're not actually including that number so if I wanted to do this properly I could if I wanted to change that to 11 there's also m another more tidy way of actually displaying this maybe you would want to have a go at producing your own times table list and have a look to see how you can improve the formatting of how that is displayed okay because that is a little bit messy but you, hopefully you understand the idea of our for loop